thank you, Jonathan. Um, I'm a bioethicist uh, working in a school of public health at the University of Montreal, and I was really delighted to hear the uh, repeated emphasis on the public health perspective and the harm reduction perspective when it comes to policy. Um, so we all know about the need uh, for more evidence uh, in terms of clinical trials and in terms of uh, uh, medical use. But what I'd like to put uh, out uh, in front of you is some research directions uh, going uh, forward in terms of uh, ethical and social uh, aspects. Um, there's been a broad acknowledgement that the uh, upcoming legalization provides an incredible research opportunity for Canadian researchers or others who are watching us. And I'd just like to suggest some of those uh, research questions that the recent move uh, is going to allow, considering that we already allow medical use for a while. Um, so looking at um, the academic or the research literature, um, it's easier to find research on the impact that medical legalization, or that legalizing medical use would have on recreational use than the other way around. So the step that we're about to make hasn't been looked at extensively. What impact would the legalization of, recreation, of recreational use have on medical users? And that's the perspective that I want to bring. Um, my points have a normative flavor to them, so there's like an implicit uh, prescriptive uh, perspective, uh, but they're mainly uh, suggested today as research questions or research areas. So the first one is what happens when recreational uh, use increases demand, and I'm not speaking about dem demand overall, but rather the demand on currently uh, existing licensed producers, which will definitely happen. Um, what happened if this creates shortage? So my normative point is that uh, in case of shortage, medical users should have priority. I think that's pretty uh, non-controversial. Uh, and that licensed producer producers should uh, commit to meeting the needs of their patients uh, first, regardless of financial interest, the current currently proposed regulations do not address this and do not guarantee this. Um, so I think it's interesting for us as public health research to, researchers to look at what is actually happening in terms of uh, shortage, is there, isn't there, and how does that impact patients. Um, I will not speak uh, about uh, cost uh, extensively because Jonathan covered it, but I think, uh, again, an ethically um, non-controversial point is that the legalization of recreational use should not increase the current cost to patients. So Jonathan is uh, arguing that the current cost is unjust. My point is much more conservative. I'm just saying legalizing recreational use at least should not increase the cost to medical users. Uh, two other points that are um, a bit more... Um, uh, social science-y. Um, the first one touches on the attitude of healthcare providers in a context of legalized recreational use. Um, will the legalization provide some uh, healthcare providers an easy way out, um, especially those who are already reluctant to prescribe to their patients? Uh, could they now argue that in the absence uh, of clear guidance regarding indication and dosage, um, they prefer to just leave their patients to self-medicate and go buy what they need in the recreational market, uh, similar to a model of over-the-counter. Uh, I argue that this was disadvantage medical users in terms of insurance coverage, in terms of uh, support, in terms of follow-up, and it might even reduce the pressure that we feel to do the research that we need to get the evidence base. And in fact, if you look at the way at the um, position that the Canadian Medical Association took on this issue, they clearly say, with the legalization of uh, cannabis now underway, we believe that a separate regulatory framework for uh, medical use is no longer necessary, and look forward to working with the federal government to eliminate this framework as soon as possible. So the Canadian uh, uh, Medical Association is in fact taking this approach that the recreational uh, uh, possibility uh, absolves them of the need uh, or should encourage the federal government to completely uh, uh, abandon um, 
the medical framework and just go with one framework for everybody. Um, so my normative point is that this would be uh, absolutely misguided. My call is for research on what actually happens on the ground uh, in clinics in terms of a patient uh, healthcare provider relationship. My last point is about social stigma. Um, it has been argued that legalizing medical use reduces the stigma associated with cannabis use because those with a prescription are seen as somehow legitimate users. In the context, context of legalizing recreational use, would that mean that medical users will have to cope again with some sort of renewed uh, social stigma in the sense that being uh, a legal user no longer would mean that you have a legitimate medical need. So a sort of conflation of all types of users um, making uh, patients cope again with a stigma that maybe has been reduced. Again, uh, calling for research on this issue. Uh, social stigma has been studied extensively, but I think that this unique context of legalizing recreational use and the perspective specifically of what that does to patients is a critically important one. Thank you.